in PDQ Deploy, we, we, we try to give you some feedback to help you help point you in the right direction as to what, what the issue actually is. All right, so uh, we're, we've got a, a handful of packages that we're going to deploy, and, and these sh pretty much should fail, but they should fail for different reasons. Yes. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and t uh, take a, let's take a stab. A stab? Uh -huh. You want to stab something, do you? Let's take a stab at Adobe Air. Okay. We're going to deploy that. We'll just deploy that. We're just pretty much going to do one, you know, one computer here, so we don't waste a lot of time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and deploy this to the computer called Abraham. Yes, and it is the computer called Abraham, not the user. So you'll notice it's connecting at this point. Again, you know, your deployments are going to run depending on the package. It could take a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. um, the good thing is you can also, you know, check your status right there at the bottom of the screen and watch that deploy, mm -hmm. or watch it connect. <laughs> All right, and then so it fail. failed. <laughs> All right. It says access denied, failed to connect. Hold on, let's check this out. So again, checking under your error, if you go to more info, the screen's going to pop. All right, failed to, uh, look at this error. It's uh, access is denied. Number one, access is denied usually means some type of uh, credentials issue, all right? That you, don't, you don't have, uh, you don't have the, the, the permissions to do something, generally. Mm -hmm. So in this case, failed to connect to target share. Uh, we always try to get to the admin dollar share, which is the, the shared Windows directory on target computers. So uh, what's, the, what's the problem? Now, you can always click on the online help for this issue, and that will take you to a web page, one of our websites, or web pages, that will give you some information. And this is a file access authorization. You can scroll down and maybe see some... Uh, Possible some causes and a po probable fix. Yeah, re recommended fixes. I'll close that back up. Now, if you want to submit this error to Admin Arsenal, keep in mind there are some errors that you'll want to submit, and then there's others that, honestly, when we get those errors, we're going to go, well, I'm uh, not sure what to do with this because this is a particular issue with, like, your... Uh, Could be for... Your particular environment. Install. Yeah, your yeah. particular environment. So, um, mm -hmm. but if you want to submit an issue to us, you click that, that link, type in your information. If you do not put your email address, then... There's no way that we can respond to you. We get this off all the time. Someone will submit a, a bug report, and we'll know exactly what the fix is. There's a configuration setting that you have, and mm -hmm. we want to we tell you, oh, all you got to do is make this change, but without any email address, um, yeah. Not a whole lot we not, can not do. Not a lot we can do. Uh, you can see the information. If you, you're going to send, you can see all the information that is being sent out uh, what, by doing what Lex just did. Yeah. Think, show the details. And then you hit send report. Uh huh. So, again, with this one, you've got a couple other options, you know, submit the issue, and then you can try a remote repair. Mm -hmm. The remote repair this just simply calls uh, a remote repair executable. It's in your program files directory. Um, yeah, it's, for the most part, the repair does the analyze. And in the analyze, you can say, well, let's just click this and check out what's going on. But I already see what the issue is. Look at that. Authenticating as Vincent. That's a local account. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, that must have been set from a previous deployment because the de you know, when you deploy, it remembers the last credentials that you used. So I'm going to come over here to Abraham and I'm going to say redeploy. Aha, I was using Vincent credentials. I want to be using my domain credentials, Deadwood. I obviously had used Vincent on a previous computer that wasn't a member of the domain. Yep, and the nice thing about it is it's a pretty easy fix there. Yep, but we are still going to fail. I made sure that this one's going to fail, or it should fail, for now a different reason. It's just we're, we're now going to get past that credential issue. And again, we'll just troubleshoot, you know, step mm -hmm. by step. Uh, okay, so now we're hitting the install Adobe Air La la la. This is the part where we drink, isn't it? <laughs> it's a monster morning for me. Cheers. So that inst while that install is running, obviously, you know, we could be doing other things. Yeah, so let's take a peek at the you know, air usually doesn't take that long to, hmm. to run, right? So let's take a peek at like I want you to tell me I want you to I, like Lex is not I don't I haven't told Lex what I've done to these packages actually. So I want you to tell me um, where, do you, where do you want me to click? Um, you know, uh, it was working on step one. And it well, let's see, where, where are we? Are we? We're still on step one. 
step one is still there. Let's go take a look at step one. Well, uh, this one's pretty simple for me to tell. Okay. I mean, we have no silent parameters. Correct. So this well is done. going to uh, <coughs> run till our timeout hits, which is like 60 minutes. Or, or it could ultimately error out. Usually they'll time out. Mm -hmm. um, if, if it keeps on going for a while, it usually means it's going to time out. Uh, but let's take a peek. I'm going to move this down here. Yep, we're still running. Let's check. I'll show you guys some tricks you can do. Uh, so right now, before we jump into the parameters, Lex, you're saying, whoa, Abraham is, uh, this computer's, what's going on? I'm going to open up, I'm going to open up PDQ inventory, uh, only so that I can do a, a quick remote desktop to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I want to look at, I'm going to go to the uh, task manager. Look at the processes. Mm -hmm. Look at that, Adobe Air install. Now, we're not seeing anything on this screen. Why? Because we're running this as uh, a service non-interactive. So you can see there's actually the Adobe install, the Adobe installer is running. It's not taking any CPU. It's just hidden. And it's waiting, it, because there were no uh, parameters, parameters, it's actually like waiting at the welcome screen. And it's install. waiting for someone to click on something that they, they will never see. They'll never see because it's running hidden. So what are we going to do? Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to minimize this. <coughs> Goodbye, PDQ inventory. And we're going to just abort that. So obviously, for the, most, for the most part, when you see an EXE here, that means you do need silent parameters mm -hmm. for the most part. There's a new exception to that, by the way. The new Google Earth came out yeah. this week. And um, instead of extracting the MSI like I usually would do and build the package, uh, they've done it differently now. It's just it's an EXE. Don't extract it. And there's no silent parameters. Really? <laughs> yes. Wow. But for the most part, your <coughs> EXE, you want silent parameters. Now, what are the silent parameters? How do you find those out? Um, again, I'd have to Google this. That's right. For Adobe Air, it, it varies by vendor and it varies by product. Yes, it does. So silently install Adobe Air. Maybe we'll get some uh, ideas here. So the uh, again, we're searching for the silent parameters. Mm -hmm. As you scroll on down, you'll find you, you'll usually find them. Uh, there it is. It's dash eula accepted and dash silent. So. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to just do a dash silent. Mm -hmm. And we want the EULA accepted. Now, obviously, when you, as um, an administrator, when you, when you accept a EULA, you, in this case, according to Adobe's uh, end user license agreement, the EULA, when you accept that, you're accepting that on behalf of all the computers that you deploy this to. Just a heads up. All right. Didn't we add uh, to our EULA that uh, everyone would end up being our towel boys if we ever decided to? <laughs> <laughs> Call him on it, huh? <laughs> a I, I butler? I need a butler. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so actually, I'm going to make that case sensitive just in case it is case sensitive. All right, so we'll hit save, and now we'll redeploy. So you could tell, we, we'll usually get someone saying, hey, what, what's going on? I just tried to deploy air, and it's just hanging. I mm -hmm. thought you guys did silent deployments. Well, you kind of have to meet us halfway because, once again, there are so many different silent parameters out there. Uh, it's hard to know which ones you have to do some some uh, some legwork. Now, obviously, Adobe Air is something you can download from our package yeah. library, and we already have that built for you. Then now we have a uh, successful. There it is. You can see. So we dealt with the credentials. Mm -hmm. Really, the, the, the takeaway is look at the error message, and if it, if something is hanging and it's hanging for too long, um, one of the first things to look at are check your, your parameters. You check your parameters. Uh, obviously, there's you'll, you'll see a link there for steps, and uh, there there are some commands that we can provide the output log for. Um, if it's an EXE, mm -hmm. generally that won't you won't see any output for that. But here, disable auto update. Just so you know, it returned an uh, exit code of zero success. You can see the command that was run and uh, in that step in the return. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll go over that a little bit more. It will help you in your troubleshooting. True. All right, so let's look at Firefox. Personal favorite. It's a great browser. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and deploy this. I know where it's going to fail. 
but I want we're gonna put Lex on the spot. Put me on. Uh, we were gambling there, huh? Yeah, probably shouldn't do that. Probably find a hobo out there that will help better. <laughs> Try, what are you trying to say? I think I just said it. I, that's a good point. <laughs> okay, fail. What's going on? I thought this thing. Gosh. Worked. All right. Uh, I'm gonna go look at steps here. Well, first of all, what did it say here? Package returned an error code. Oh, 128. 128. People are going to, so you already know what it I is. I know what a 128 is. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, that's, is that our exit code? When I say our, is that PDQ deploys? It really depends on where the exit code's coming from. Yeah. If it's coming from the vendor's package, it could be a vendor yeah. error code. For the most part, it's the, the error codes that you see, they're not ours. Mm -hmm. But where it failed where? So it looks like it failed step three, killing oh. Firefox. So killing Firefox. And so notice there is an output log on this command step. There we go. So we're trying to kill Firefox, and the error is the process Firefox EXE is not found. So in this case, it looks like um, because Firefox wasn't there to be killed, it's being stopped. It, yeah, it's considered a failure. Yeah. So we need to, I would go in and probably add that as a success code and uh, mm -hmm. possibly even uh, change the options or the conditions to move on. Perfect. So if you say uh, 128 was returned, mm -hmm. that makes it successful. We just want it, that's that's the code that was returned by this uh, process, task kill dot exe. You want to zoom in on that, JJ? Now the other thing is you can have m multiple success codes, not just two, three. Just make sure you separate them by a comma. Yes. So task. Remember, everything you run is going to return some type of a code when it's finished um, to the calling to the calling process, which in this case was PDQ deploy. So mm -hmm. it's going to say, hey, here's my exit code. Some of those codes mean success, some of those codes mean failure. Most of them mean failure. Mm -hmm. But in this case, 128, that's a task kill for the process wasn't running. Well, that's okay, because I, I didn't want it running in the first place. That's why I was trying to kill it. So let's consider that a, a success. But if we didn't do that, let's say, we'd, let's say we don't want to do that, but we go to the options like Lex had mentioned. Go ahead and zoom back out, JJ. Stop deploying with error. We could change it to... Mm -hmm. this, this, the, the options are per step mm -hmm. and on this step it says what do you want to do when the when there's an error in other words when there's anything that doesn't match something in your success code line correct S we can change that to continue mm -hmm. so i've not added 128 to the success code but i did say if it if it errors out continue let's see what that does for us so the nice thing is we'll be able to check the log output on this and Mm -hmm. Still see what happened. Yep. Error codes, once again, they do they do vary by vendor and by um, product. If there is a, if you are installing something via an MSI, mm -hmm. there's usually a, um, a there's a, there's standard um, MSI return codes or Microsoft installer return codes, and that makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, we're on, we got past step three, so apparently that worked out. Mm-hmm. Oh, and there's our return code, 128. 128. Notice that that's a, that shows a failure there. There's mm -hmm. a problem because I didn't add 128 to the success codes. But we did say continue on. Even if you get an error on this step, continue on, and that's why it went forward. Now, had I added 128, um, that would have just had a green check, box, check mark there, okay? Mm -hmm. So once again, just for the future, we'll just go over here on step three and add 128. It's unnecessary to add 128 to other steps that don't call task kill. Task kill. All right. So, hey, by the way, if you guys have any questions, yeah. uh, throw down at any point. Oh, well, let's. Uh, oh, here we go. Does aborting the deployment kill the process on the remote machine or machines? From Squat P. What a great name. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, it's. Uh, <laughs> yes, it does, or it, it should. Um, that's, I mean, that's a, that's, a great, that's a great question. Yes, when, when we submit an abort uh, signal to that remote runner process, the last thing the remote runner, runner does is just clean, it's basically stop any process that it had started. So um, it, some cases where that may not work, if you're running a, a deployment and that remote runner process on the target computer starts a process, and then that process that was started starts another process and it doesn't have that parent-child relationship, that other process could still be alive. 
But for the most part, you know, we run setup exe or this MSI, and then get aborted. That a signal is sent to kill those. Yep. So you can control it at that mm -hmm. level. Yes. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Otherwise, it would be a real pain. Like in that case of Adobe Air, where you would actually have to go out to that target computer and s and kill that process. That would be kind of a pain in the butt. All right. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Do we have? Did you say we had any more? Oh, let's. Uh, should we hit another question then? Will you explain the computer name mismatch error, Christopher J? That's a great one. Yeah, it is. So. Uh, yeah, the computer name mismatched. Now, there's a primary cause. Do you mm -hmm. want to jump on this one? Oh, it's DNS. You know, <laughs> dirty DNS is basically <laughs> yeah. dirty DNS. Yeah. So basically what this means, uh, and you're right. I'll, I'll give you one example where that's not necessarily DNS, but uh, it's, a, it's also an edge case. For the most part, when you get the computer name mismatched, that means um, Deploy is saying, what is the IP address for, in this case, Abraham. Abraham. Mm -hmm. And uh, DNS returns an IP address that actually goes to a different host name, to a different computer. And we try to connect to it, and we say, oh, wait, Deploy is trying to go to Abraham, but this is returning um, Lisa. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a computer name mismatch. It's yeah. usually because, I'll tell you, the single greatest, uh, the feedback we've gotten, the single greatest uh, change in the environment to remove the computer mismatch errors is enabling scavenging. DNS scavenging. Enabling DNS scavenging. That will clear out stale records. Yes. And in, in some cases, you might have to have your scavenging set fairly aggressive, um, fairly aggressively. That would be like in an environment where, you're, where you have more computers and you actually have IP addresses. Mm -hmm. And so you've got very short lease times. Another time is D if, DHCP you lease times, yeah. if you've got a lot of uh, wireless machines that will go from a docking station, travel around the office on wireless, and then get docked again. You'll end up with, again, a lot of DNS records. It, especially and especially if you have a lot of, um, uh, a, a, a very short lease time on yeah, your DHCP. Yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the killers. So uh, look up DHCP scavenging. It's a, if you're using the Windows DNS, it's very simple. It's mm -hmm. a, you just Easy setting, yeah. yeah. It's an enable, and that will clear up the stale records. Now, the edge case that I was talking about, um, it's still kind of related to, to DNS, but if you're using a lot of uh, machines that, like maybe uh, virtual machines, and you roll them back to previous states, yeah. you could get the computer mismatch error, and that's actually uh, what it should be saying is, in, that, in those cases, uh, that computer lost its trust relationship. Trust relationship, yeah. yeah. But for some reason, um, that's just the error that Windows is returning, so... Uh, keep that in mind. Hopefully that answers your question. Was that squat? Did I ask that? Uh, no, that no, was, was Chris. Was Chris. Oh. Squat, I see the one. Christopher J asked that one. So. What was that, JJ? I can't hear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead, and unless there's other questions, we're going to move on. We've got another one. LibraCAD. Ready? All right, game on. I'm going to see if you catch this one. Do you really think people believe I haven't seen this? <laughs> yeah. We haven't set this oh, up. I, I don't know if you've ever installed LibreCAD. It's in our package library, but it's I not very popular. I have never installed LibreCAD, no. Okay. So, obviously, it's installing LibreCAD, or it's like tempting to. All right, so it tried to kill it, 128. That's the task kill, so that was successful. Nice. It was successful because it wasn't running. Mm-hmm. Giving it a second. Bueller. 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 That'll date us on it. Uh, while we're waiting, I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to see now. I mean, you might catch this one. Who knows? Okay. So what step are we on? We're on step two. We're on step two. Stall LibreCAD. Let me make that. I'm sorry. i got to make that bigger. Sorry about that, guys. All right. <clears throat> hmm. So we've got, um, I don't know. There's no additional files. No, nope, no additional files are needed. Parameters S. I guess at this point, I mean, this I'd probably have to wait for the failure, but uh, it's still taking a long time. So I, uh, mm -hmm. the only thing I can think at this point is maybe we need to check to see if I'm missing a parameter. Oh, that's a good. That's a good place to start. But there are some, uh, actually, quite a few applications uh, that are built uh, using a, an install. There's an. Ins there's an. Uh, there's a. a, a installer application mm -hmm. where people where a lot of vendors will actually just build 
um, their program wrap it up into an exe and it's uh, only one option for s for silent parameter but this is one of the few ones where it's a it's case sensitive the slash s needs to be uppercase really yes and there's quite mm. a few applications out there you'll see them in our package library and uh, I think it's someone say null soft is the program that people use but it needs to be an uppercase s once again this just varies by so basically it's a good school of thought if you read or you find silent parameters and they're doing uppercase you just mm -hmm. follow suit with it so uh, we've gone back to Abraham this is going to show the, the question about will it actually kill that process let's let's give it a try we can see the LibreCAD installer running, it's mm -hmm. taking zero processor. I'm going to abort, and LibreCAD is gone. Excellent. Okay. But we've changed this to an uppercase. Now, generally, in Windows, we all know this. In, in Windows, uh, case insensitive. It's usually case insensitive. Lex is Lex has a, a, a very background. very rich Linux background. <laughs> case sensitivity is a wonderful thing. I, yes. But uh, this is one of those cases. I think it, once again, I think it's uh, Nursoft. I think I think it's Nursoft. Is uh, Did slash you say Nerdsoft? Nerd or Nullsoft? Null so I can't remember. <laughs> okay. I'm smoking crack. Anyway, slash S, uppercase. We're going to retry that. So on those applications where you do see a slash S, or you're uh, asking, you're out, you're out asking questions. Um, hey, how do I silently install this program? And somebody says, oh, use a slash S. If it's simply a slash S, chances are pretty good that it needs to be the uppercase. Hmm. Sound good? Let's go look at Abraham now. We can see, oh, there's no, LibreCAD, but it's actually using some processor, and now it's gone. Hmm. Yep, yep, yep run three, creating shortcuts. Excellent. All right, so uh, case sensitivity on parameters. To see if Missing it, parameters. Yep, LibreCAD installed. Excellent. All right, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, so uh, but I want to go one more place. Okay. Because you had kind of alluded to this. I'm going to come back into Firefox. Now, we had changed Firefox. Remember, we uh, it, put see. our success code and changed our mm -hmm. option to continue. Now, I'm going to e go back here. You guys are going to see what I'm going to do. Uh, notice we're calling uh, Firefox.ini. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, the CD, that's a built-in Windows parameter, uh, or a Windows variable. You won't find it in your environment variables. It's compiled at runtime, but it's, uh, that just stands for current directory. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is that? How do you get to the current directory in Linux? Uh, period slash. <laughs> Here we Dot go. Slash. So anyway, we've got, um, we're going to remove this. Notice, we are expecting the INI file mm -hmm. because we copy that down there. There's the additional file. But if we don't have that as an additional file, but we're calling it. So a lot of times when you're missing files, the cases have been uh, you need an entire directory or you're calling a specific file. This is the error that you're going to see when that happens. Well, and it will vary. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's say if you're doing, if you're installing Microsoft Office and you've used the Office customization toolkit, the OCT, mm -hmm. um, and you run when you install Office, I'm going to just pretend that this is Office, uh, you've got to have the include entire the directory because there's so many files. If you don't check that, it only pulls down the, e the setup exe, and that will actually, for Microsoft in 2013, that will actually return very quickly with a success. Hey, it ran. Hmm. <laughs> but usually it will either hang or it, you'll get an error that a file is missing. It just kind of depends. Yeah, so we have, we have some questions? Yeah. Trying to deploy a batch script. Status shows successful, but the program was not installed. Okay. Hey, Mark. How's it going, buddy? Um, That's kind of a, a wild one there. Mm -hmm. Batch file can be doing pretty much anything. And by the way, while, while the reason why this is hanging now is because without that file, uh, Firefox is just going, hey, it's, it's, it's displaying a message that no one can see. Where's, where's my file? Yeah. yeah. So uh, <coughs> we want to, the, the fix for that one was to go back into the add files and uh, add that file back. Okay, so you have a batch file that's returning an error, or it's, uh, it's returning, returning a, success. a success. Okay, the, remember, the batch file is the process that we are calling. So here's a, let's see this. Oh, test deployment. We can, uh, can make a batch file there. Yeah, we could already do that. Okay. So you've got a batch file. I'm going to create one really quick.
All right. And maybe this batch file, we're going to say, uh, let's see, uh, set, I think it's, can, you, can I set the error level from here? Set error level equals one, and then exit zero. What, what I'm doing there is, let's say you call a program in your batch file, and that program doesn't succeed. But the, the batch file continues to process. If there's even one command after that batch file, after that setup that failed or that process that failed, the, ba the, the batch file could return an exit code. So what I'm saying is you might have a batch file that, that has a bunch of lines, one of them calls this program, and then it processes other lines of code, and when it exits, it's going to take the last returned um, code. code. Yeah, the yeah. last returned exit code. So this one here should succeed, even though I had to set this uh, set this to fail. This should actually succeed. Deploy PDQ deploy. It's a nice, easy way to make a package. Mm -hmm. So that it's calling that batch file. We don't need any parameters because I didn't specify it. Send that to Abraham. And I'm, I may as well. I mean, we've never actually done this one, so we, we could be getting some. <laughs> could be very interesting. <laughs> yes, could be very interesting. Um, so it's running successful. Why it, it returned an e exit code of zero? Mm -hmm. But there was something that failed that returned an exit code one earlier on in there. But the same is, is also true. You could have you could have something that actually succeeds. Just running like a dir command, but something else in your batch file fails and the returns another error code. You know, the last thing in your batch file yeah. returns a and we'll get people saying that. We'll get people saying, hey, this uh this came back and said it failed, but the application was actually installed. And uh, how are you installing it? I, I have a batch file mm -hmm. that runs through a bunch of things. OK, so it succeeded at some point in that batch file. Oh, this one failed. Hmm. Surprise. Aha, uh -huh. exit code one. Why? Because I exited it with one. But it still did run dir. But it, it succeeded. Mm -hmm. It's just it exited. Something else failed. So when you're dealing with, when you're using an install step, like we are here, a basic install step to call a script, whether it's a VBS, PowerShell, batch, whatever. Keep in mind that we are only grabbing the output that's ultimately returned by the batch file mm -hmm. or the script file. And all of the logic that's contained therein, um, we don't necessarily see. We, don't, we, we only look at the ultimate return code. Yep. So keep that in mind. That's probably a, a good place for you to look. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I'm going to th throw, throw one more thing out where somebody will say, hey, I'm installing something, and it's succeeding, but I can't, uh, when I, when I, when the user can't access it. And these c there are some applications that need to run in the user's context. So let me see if I can do a quick example here. Um, someone will say, oh, yeah, I'm not seeing any icons for this. It says it succeeded. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do this. I'm going to create a command step. Now, some of the things that I know run that need to be run as a local user, mm -hmm. be like Team Viewer or uh, you know things like that. Okay. And in those cases, again, if you run them with the credentials of their domain admin, that icon will be created mm -hmm. for the domain admin. And you know, when I log in, if I'm not a domain admin, I won't see it if I'm not the credentialed user. There you go. So, so here I'm just going to do a, a step a user path. Let's see. Um, actually, uh, now I'm having a brain fart. We, let's say we want to copy something. We want to copy something to. Um, now I'm having a brain fart. We want to copy something to the user's desktop. All right, um, uh, or or to their temp folder. We'll say we mm -hmm. want to copy something just to their temp folder. So I'm going to say, let's add, well, let's add that batch file. It's on the desktop. Why not? And we could actually use uh, the copy step. Yeah, we have a net brand new copy step in um, PDQ deploy 6. So the source file, let's go right to the desktop. 
Say, let's grab, grab a batch file. this batch file. And where are we going to place it? We're going to place it in percent temp. Now, percent temp happens to be um, a user, it's a, in the user's context. So when I say temp, I'm saying, yeah, copy this out to the temp directory on the target computer. And uh, let's go out to Abraham again. Mm -hmm. So we'll get people that will say, hey, this is supposed to go out to my user's desktop or to their temp directory or something. It's there, but it's not showing up. Yeah, why? What's, what's wrong? So we're lo logged in as Trixie on here. Our credentials are Quintana, so. Mm -hmm. we're, just, we're deploying as Quintana. Do, do, do. You can see that over there. And the deploy user, expand that out. You'd see that we're running as Quintana. Come into Abraham. I'm going to go to temp. Not hey, there. where's the batch file? It's, it's not there. But if you were to come over to, now Trixie might have a problem with this, but we're going to go to C users, and we'll tell, we'll tell people, okay, so go to the account that you ran this as, and it's in uh, app data, local, temp. There's it the is. batch file. So how can you get around that? In those cases, you're going to want to run this step as, as the logged on user. Okay, so Trixie's logged on. We then re we then redeploy. Now, one thing about running as logged on user, uh, if whatever process you're running expects administrative rights, and that logged on user isn't an administrator, then obviously you're going to fail. You have issues, yeah. Yep. So if we come back over here, there's my batch in. Oh, Quintana. That's, that's Quintana. Let's go back over here. Sorry. Do our temp. There's my batch. So there are times you need to run things in the context. Hey, hey, it says it was successful, but my user can't see it. So keep that in mind. I think we're out of time. I think we are. I'll just keep on going because I love this stuff. So, All right, guys. Um, well, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, by all means, send them to us. We'll try to get to them. Good questions today. Yeah. Thanks much. I'm Lex. I'm Shane. Rock on. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you can hear me now. Uh, sorry for the audio problems earlier. We'll get that fixed. Um, Squat, Mark, Christopher, we featured your questions during the webcast. Will you please send me an email to webcast at adminarsenal.com? Let me know your name and contact information. We'd like to send you some PDQ swag, whether it's a shirt or a shot glass or something cool. Uh, we do these webcasts every Thursday, so look forward to seeing you the next time. Thanks for joining us.